What's up, math scholars? Mrs. Harp here. We're gonna... I've never actually done this, made a video to go with a study guide, but I'm doing this because we have a lot of band kids still on the trip, so welcome home. You're probably feeling jet-lagged by the time you're watching this video, but I hope this helps you get ready to take your math quiz. Who's happy we're at school today? Yeah! Yeah. Clearly, you guys have never watched my videos and seen that we normally have enthusiastic introductions for all the kids who've been hollering class. So who's excited? Woo! Yeah. I'm. My apologize. This class is terrible. <laughs> oh, now they're laughing. Now they're laughing. Okay. So we're gonna graph this sequence, but how can we graph a single variable? We can't, right? We need two variables. So we're gonna assign. A x variable to all of these y variables, and those ordered pairs are the ones we'll be graphing. Okay? You got any weird looks? Do you, all these are y values. They need to have corresponding x values. So term 1 is a 2, term 2 is a 5, term 3 is a 10, and that's how that works. So 1, 2 is a location that we will graph with a dot. 1, 2, graph it with a dot. 2 comma 5 is a location you will graph with a dot. 3 comma 10 is a location you will graph with a dot. And then 4 17 is off the picture, so don't worry about it. Should we connect our dots now? No. No, no this is called a discrete data set with no decimal x values, no decimals in the domain. So you're done. <laughs> well, with part A. Now, we need to find the equation for this. So I guess my question is, is it linear? Is it making a straight line? It's going up by 3, it's going up by 5, it's going up by 7. So we can't just do a linear equation trick like yesterday. So we have to just kind of brainstorm. Maybe it has to do with squaring. Maybe it has to do with cubing. Squared plus 1. Good, squared plus 1. Who said that? One ticket for the scholar. The map alert. But anyways, let's write that out. Y equals x squared plus 1. So any questions on one? Number two. Find the next term in the sequence. Raise your hand if you know. I'll give you a ticket. You need tickets for your quiz tomorrow probably. So just volunteer a lot today. No flirting. Jessica? Okay, so 7 over 9 is the next term in our sequence. I agree. She saw the pattern. And so before I come up with what the rule is, I like to assign x values to every y value. So this is term 1. That's an x. That's a y. This is term 2. This is term 3. And this is term 4. My advice to you would be treat the numerator separately from the denominator when you're making your equation. So let's look at the numerators first. How could I turn a 1 into a 4? A 2 into a 5, a 3 into a 6, etc. Huh? So we would do x plus 3 for the numerator. Connor? Alright, let's look at our denominator. How would I turn a 1 into a 6, a 2 into a 7, a 3 into an 8? Jake? Uh, you get 5, 5. Good. So this is your equation. You get your numerator by taking x plus 3. You get your denominator by taking your x and adding 5. All right, we're going to write the first four terms of the sequence. Can I have a volunteer just raise your hand and talk me through how I'm going to have to do this? I'll give you a ticket. All right. Aren't you going to set up like a table and then like So you can call these x's and y's, or you can call them n's and an's. It's really the same thing. We're going to plug and chug. You can even have a calculator at the table for you. Oh, that's just what my math teachers always used to say. So 6 minus 4 times 1 would be 2. 6 minus 4 times 2 would be 6 minus 8. 6 minus 4 times 3 would be 6 minus 12. And 6 minus 4 times 4 would be 6 minus 16. So negative term. Not looking about right. And these are your first four terms that you could list out on the answer blank. This was the actual quiz itself. Make sense? So like literally list them out like this. 2, negative 2, negative 6, negative 10. 
All right, we're back. We are going to do a series now. So, can, um, I had parentheses added on mine. It was a typo that you didn't have parentheses on yours. Without parentheses, it was actually, it's actually a different problem. So go ahead and add the parentheses on. Oh, I skipped one. Oh my gosh, it must have like disappeared off my slideshow. Let me find it. All right, I'm going to pause the video and find number four. It's long. All right, so I never did find four, but I wrote it up here on the board. So the prompt is write using summation notation. So summation notation looks like this. That'd be a great start for yourself. We're going to start with term one because we always start with term one. And I'm going to number my terms. We have term one, term two, term three, term four. We don't know how many terms have gone by, but we will need to figure out what term that 41 is. That's going to become part of our job. Um, so let's think about what our formula is. How could I turn a 1 into an 11 and a 2 into a 14 and a 3 into a 17? Well, they are adding 3 each time, so I actually like Austin's idea. Our slope is 3, but we would need to find our y-intercept. We can either solve for it or think about it. I like to just think about it. If I would go back one term, I would be at my intercept point, at my term 0. Yeah, 8. So we'll just check to make sure that works. It's 2 times 3 plus 8 is 14. Yeah, so term 0 of 8 is actually the y-intercept. Um, that'll help us figure out what term this is. So um, basically 3n plus 8 is 41. That'll help us figure out what term 41 is. So it's minus the 8 to the other side. Um, would that be 33? And divide both by, sides by 3. So it's the 11th term. Yep. We put a little 11 right there. So this sequence goes from term 1 to term 11. And the formula that generates it is 3n plus 8. And put the 3n plus 8 in parentheses. Number 5 is right here. So we're going to find the sum of the series using charts to show our work. So I'll give out a ticket. Let me explain what we have to do here. Kayla? Good. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, technically, you could put like the value of the term here. You could write like I don't know why, whatever you want. All right, Kayla, help me fill out my chart now. How do I get my chart filled out? Perfect. Four squared minus eight would be sixteen minus eight. So eight sound okay? Five squared minus eight would be twenty-five minus eight. So seventeen. Uh, you could also have the table world and the calculator fill out this table for you. Totally up to you. 28 is next. 41. 56. And 73. All right, Kayla. We have one more thing to tell me to do because we're not quite done. She's trying to win her ticket still. So we're trying to... Here's, let me read the instructions. might tell you. Some... What am I going to sum? What am I going to add? You know? All your I values are all your terms in your sequence. Oh, and all the terms. Right. So she's going to take all these, add them up, and that's going to give her a, her final answer. This is one single number to the final answer. It's okay. I recycled them. So, did anybody add these up yet? I got 223, but I would yeah, like somebody to verify that. Okay, I did them real quick. I like people verifying it. I did it real quick before class today. Uh, sure. So any questions on five before we move along? We're all good. I'm not going too fast. Jake's going to explain how to do number six. So if we start off with one, k is equal to one, we go one up to four. Okay, now how do I fill out my chart? So 1 over 4. Um, 2 over 5, I believe. 
three over six, which is one half. Yeah, you can turn these all into decimals if that makes you more comfortable. So one point. This would be point two five. This would be what point two. Um, this would be point five. Next one is uh, four over seven. If you like decimals, that's point five seven. I have on my paper. But then yeah, add up all these guys in this right hand column to get your final solution. Huh? It's point four, not point two. Oh, my bad. Thank you. Two fists is four tenths. Think you just save the day. You get a ticket. <laughs> all right, and then when you add them all up, on my paper, and I would like you to verify this, I have one point seven two. Yes, I got that. Awesome. Yeah. That's your final. That's all that goes on the answer. Nothing else. All right, I told the students to try this one all by themselves, so hopefully they're finished things up. You make your chart from 2 to 6. Your values are, and I call these values, um, 16, 35, 72, 133, and 224. And then those are the ones that you add up together to get your final answer of 480. So how did that go? Scholarly? Okay. All right, so we are going to provide the shortcuts to you, either on a formula piece of paper or up on the board if you're in this room. Um, what formula do you think we'll use on this one? Shortcut one, shortcut two, shortcut three, or shortcut four? If you look at the formula itself, or the equation, the equation's a single variable, so shortcut two. Let me go ahead and write down shortcut two on the board for everybody at home. So it's n times n plus one over two, where n is the upper limit of the series. So n would be 47 in this case. Cool? So it's 47 times 48 over 2. I'll give you a second to type that in. Eleven twenty-eight sound about right? All right, number nine, same deal. On the study guide, I forgot the parentheses, but they are very important. So add the parentheses in for yourself. Do you think we could use, I guess it wouldn't be, oh, the final answer to the last one was 1128. You probably could make a table. It wouldn't be outrageous to make a table one through eight. But we are going to use a shortcut. Is it shortcut one, two, three, or four? four. It's actually shortcut four we just learned yesterday. If the equation is something in slope-intercept form, you can utilize shortcut 4. So let me explain how shortcut 4 works. I'll write it down. I'll write down what all these little guys mean, just in case you forget from yesterday. N is the number of terms in the sequence, or series, whatever you want to call it. Um, A1 is the first term in the series, and An is the last term in the series. So let's go ahead and use the shortcut. N is the number of terms. Or up, the upper bound, I call it, also. So there's eight, right? Eight terms. So N is going to be eight. The first term, we will calculate ourselves by putting a one in for H. So it would be a 12, right? The first term would be a 12. You put a one in for H, and you calculate your first term. So for the last term, you put an 8 in for H, and you calculate it. 47. Right, so what they basically do is they find the midpoint of the first and last term, and they multiply it by how many terms there are. That's how this mathematically works. So I have 236, does that sound about right for the final answer? You can type it in if you would like. Make sure you click enter before dividing by 2, or it will calculate wrong. If you type all this in as one piece, like I have it, it'll calculate wrong. I would do 12 plus 47, enter, divide by 2, enter, times 8. That's how I would type it in. I have to type in these later on. That's a great way to study. Huh? I was just asking because I can't just add the top two and then divide. All right, over on 10. What shortcut can I use? Shortcut 1, shortcut 2, or shortcut 3? It's the third one because the equation is a variable being squared. Let me jot it down from the board. n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 
all over 6, where n is the upper limit of the series. So n is 27 in this case. So it would be 27 times 28 times, I do not know what 2 times 27 plus 1 is, but I will calculate it real quick. 2 times 27 plus 1. 55, thank you. All over 6. Six nine thirty. That looks about right to me. All right. We are on number eleven on the back. So yes or no? Is this an arithmetic sequence? Because that could save us time with our equation if it is. Yes. It sure is. What's the first term? What's the first term of this? Yeah. Negative eight's the first term, and the constant difference. Six. So if you want to save some time, you could use this formula for arithmetic sequences for part A. So you can just plot term 1 in for A1. You can plot in your constant difference for D, and that would be fine. Yeah. Now if you want to convert it to slope-intercept form because you want it to look nicer, do you know how to do that? Just distribute your 6 in. So that would give you a 6n minus 6. So 6n minus 14 would be slope intercept form. I know I like slope intercept form, so let's go ahead and do that. So I would accept what's in pink or what's in green. I like what's in green because of what we're going to have to do on B and C. So part B lets you summation notation to write what the sum of the first 10 terms would look like. So we'd start with term 1, we'd go to term 10. And we generate our sequence with the equation 6n minus 14. Put that in parentheses. So it's up to you. Do you want to find the sum with a chart, or do you want to use the sum, find the sum with a shortcut? shortcut. Heck yeah, I would use the shortcut. I'm not going to, you make the chart. Go for it. Make that chart. I don't care. Um, I would definitely use shortcut number four on the board, which is n. Yeah, because it's in slope intercept form. A1 plus AN over 2. So N is the number of terms that you're trying to add together, which is 10 in this case. A1 is the first term, which heck, they gave the first term to me. It's up off the screen right now because I scrolled a bit. But what was that first term? Negative 8. I can calculate out what the last term would be. It would be the 10th term. So I would put a 10 in for N. 6 times 10 minus 14. 46. I think. 60 yeah, yeah, yeah. minus 14. And then all over 2. I'll give you a second to type that in. Do you get 190? The 46 is the last term in the sequence. You get it by putting this 10 in for n. 6 times 10 minus 14. All right, our last two problems are slope-intercept form problems that we just learned yesterday. Finding slopes, finding intercepts. Why don't you go ahead and try number 12 and 13 all by yourself? And then when you're done, you can look up and check, okay? Hey, people on the video, here's your answer to 12. Hopefully you remembered the constant difference was the same thing as slope, and you solved for your intercept. So the kids in the class are now doing 13 by themselves.
by finding your slope. All right, because my class wanted additional fun, we're going to talk ACT bonus. Guess what you need? You're adding fractions. Guess what we need? An LCM! That should be music to eat everyone's ears. Does anybody know what the least common multiple of radical 2 and radical 3 would be? No? You're going to basically put the radical 2 on the list, put the radical 3 on the list. The LCM would be radical 2 times radical 3, or radical 6, in other words. I guess I'll just use it as a radical 6. So to get my radical 2 to look like a radical 6, I will multiply top and bottom by a radical 3. So my top will be 4, it's hard to see, but my top up here will be 4 radical 3. That's your first fraction. The second fraction, to get a radical 3 to look like a radical 6, you multiply by a radical 2. So I'll do that on the top and the bottom. So my final answer... Keep in mind, when you add fractions, you keep your denominator the same. The final answer would be 4 radical 3 plus 2 radical 2 over radical 6. Oh, gee. Fun. All right. Well, thanks for being a like, super good attentive class. Thanks for watching the video at home. And um, have a happy day. Bye-bye.